Games are just a waste of time. That's what my parents tell me every single day. That's not the discussion. What was the discussion again? Oh yeah. How games gonna evolve? That's our question for today's video. Hey, my friend. How are you? Games are everything. That's why when I sit down and play Clash Royale, Peace 19 or Call of Duty or PUBG Mobile, which is the most time, say nothing ever happens. Except my back hurts a little bit, that's why I use those things. I don't know what is that. It works. And and I get a lot hungry, that's why I love sandwiches. But gaming wasn't like that. In fact, computers wasn't like that either. It all starts when Charles Babbage, a British man, created the programmable computer like ours right here. But it doesn't stay like that. It shrunk a bit and gets a little bit better every day, every week. I don't know. But according to Moore's law, the computers double in ability every year and a half which is amazing and that because our processors are made of transistors which are made of silicon and that could be made smaller so that's why it shrunk and in that process games improved a bit by a bit from the 3d tic-tac-toe which is the first game created in a computer a video game created in a computer passing through Mario and our old school GTA to our PUBG Mobile right now, which we admire. And that makes our computers, according to Moore's law, gonna be better in one and a half years. And we're gonna look at these versions of PUBG and say it is an old school game we loved. Or are we? Well, not exactly. Computers right now aren't getting any smaller or better. Because they shrunk to the limit. Transistors are right now at the scale of few atoms. And that makes something weird happen. Transistor is a switch. It can be either on, so the light. Not the light, but look at the pass through. Or off, where it's not allowed. But, in the small scale, transistors can't block this electricity from passing through. And that is because of the weirdness of things at that scale. And there's a whole branch of science working on it. It's called quantum mechanics. Have you heard of that? The thing that happens to our computers is called quantum tunneling. Electrons go through the barrier of silicon in our transistors, tunneling, not literally, but disappearing from one side and appearing in the other. Don't go away, I will cover that in another episode. So we can't get any smaller because of the quantum mechanics. Yeah, that sucks. That sucks. Well, the quantum mechanics, have you heard of that? And here comes the idea to make a computer with particles that obey the quantum rules. That way we use quantum mechanics to our advantage. Well, this computer is called a quantum computer. You already know that from the video title. So, computers keep growing and games will be awesome. No, precisely. I'll explain that later in the video. Well, if you don't know what a quantum computer is, you should watch my video up there. It is gold. If we have a chip of this in the future with enough bits, quantum bits, a lot of things are gonna have a revolution. Like artificial intelligence. In any game, if you play it against the computer, not this one, a quantum computer, to win against it is really, really hard. Not that much. It is nearly impossible to win against it. In the game of chess, for example, a normal computer plays against itself to improve. The more it played, the better it gets. But in our computer, because we don't have normal bits, which can be only 1 or 0, we have qubits, 
quantum bits that can be 1 and 0 at the same time. And you know that because you are subscribed to my channel and watch my golden video. Because the quantum bit can have 1 and 0 at the same time. That makes computers can play against itself in every possible way at once. That make the new god of chess. That goes on to every possible game in the entire universe. From more simpler games to hugely more complicated games. And that's not the end. Graphics is going to be indirectly revolutionized. And it's going to be undistinguishable from our reality. Because it's going to be taken from it. And most of the processing is going to be taken on a quantum computer chip. But the visual screen is going to be on a normal classical computer. Because if we made a quantum computer do it, it's going to be all gray. Now, let's imagine a chess LAN and every square is a pixel. If you give the pixel 0, it returns black, and if you give it 1, it returns white. But in the quantum computer, it is 1 and 0 at the same time, so it appears gray. Just like that, the quantum computer will not replace the classical computer in every way of its field. But which one will you choose? And the answer is, you won't. And you will have a quantum ship. In your computer or at least you're gonna get access to it like your home considering the low amount of temperature it is needed to work out or you can access it via internet like IBM yes you heard me right IBM is doing it IBM put a quantum computer for you my friend or anybody who wants to play with their five quantum bits chip for free i highly recommend going there and playing with it because you can and maybe maybe just maybe you learn something or at another level you can build something literally people are making games on the quantum computer ibm q that is a pretty cool idea think about it but also think about what can you do with five quantum bits? Well, a lot. You can go at 32 paths at once. Crazy, right? But is it enough? No, it's not. It's not enough for our hopes, our dreams, our vision. But we're moving forward. But for our hopes, our vision, we need at least one kilobyte. One quantum kilobyte, or maybe a megabyte, I don't know. But it is a lot. And now to the million dollar question. When will it be done? That's a pretty cool question. But nobody knows unless somebody from the future came out and told us. That's not gonna happen. Me, you know that. Or do we? I don't know. If Mars Law plays a role in our current computers and the quantum computers, that will make it 20, 25, 20 years about that. But scientists don't think so. Some scientists say it is 50 years and some say less. Me, personally, I'm going to estimate it is about five years. Why? Just a bit of history. In 1901, the brothers Wright done their first experiment on flying. And Man will never fly. Not in our lifetime. But two years later, boom! The first successful flight. So maybe this theory will have a quantum computer. At least that's what we hope. Thanks for watching. Thanks for helping us do it. And I'll see you next time. Peace.